Okay, we're down here at EPD Laboratories and brought the uh, Chris Carson uh, high voltage rotary electrostatic converter. So what we have here is, uh, let's see, Eric Simpson right here to read the high voltage. This is a um, potential power supply to be able to excite and charge up the uh, capacitor to high voltage. The uh, output of these are going into this uh, transformer here. The output is going to the scope. This is a DC power supply which is supplying uh, power to this uh, DC motor right here. And so right now it's not charged the high voltage capacitor so Eric's going to walk us through uh, what, what's going on here. Okay, so he just turned on the uh, DC power supply to, to turn the motor. So you can see that's running right now. Okay, now we're going to turn on the uh, high voltage power supply. Yeah. Start, start it off down on zero. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get it, uh, what, just bring it up uh, to about 2,000 volts. Okay, we're good. It's 5,000 for the scale. Yeah, right there. Good. Okay, so we're at 2,000 volts on the high voltage uh, potential supply. Okay, now we're going to charge this capacitor. Then we get an AC output. So it's generating right now. Okay, now what's interesting is um, bring it show back, get that back on. Camera. So we can see the scope also. Now I'm gonna disconnect the power supply. So he's disconnecting the high voltage yeah, to the capacitor. Thing about this thing is it, it's become self-sustaining. It's still continuing to generate. The charge uh, does not dissipate, even though the thing is is generating electricity. It, uh, of course, the, any moisture or leakage it, it'll leak off. So you have to re-energize it down in. The purpose of the transformer is to take the, uh, actually we should draw, draw, draw a diagram, make it easy to see what's going on. So this high voltage was turned up to the max yeah, we're until, it, until it until uh, it sparks across and then it was backed off, so that's yes, about 3400, 3500. And, okay. Here's the diagram. So this is the charge source, the clip lead. So, because the transformer doesn't have any real DC resistance, then this will go over and charge both capacitors. And then, can, can we turn it off? Okay. So the transformer then steps the uh, isolates the high voltage from the scope and then steps it down. So it was about uh, we had about 12 volts out. That transformer does not have to be that physically big, and, and consequently, that's lugging the thing down. So we really can't get the full AC potential out of the thing. But that's all, all we got. It would take a special transformer. Uh, to do this to get the full out output. So we really don't need, know how much output is available. But um, so the motor turns at 5,000 RPM and 
when one capacitor is increasing in capacitance, its complementary capacitor is decreasing capacitance. So this thing is like shuffling back and forth. And then once they're charged, other than what leaks off uh, through the insulators and what have you, um, it will continue to shuffle that charge and not use it up why it generates the, uh, the output power, which is kind of interesting. So whatever power is taken from the output is supplied by the motor. Now, what also can be done is you can put the frequency in here that the motor is turning at and uh, put power back in rather than taking power back out and then synchronize the, the AC from here to the motor and then this will become a motor and then this will become a generator. So what's interesting here is this thing will work as a motor with no windings and no magnets. You know, needless to say, that's going to be a little more complicated to set up, but, um, but that's the, the objective here is to use this thing as a motor and demonstrate that in public. So this is kind of the first step, getting an AC output uh, is, is the first stage here. Right. Next step is we have to get an electrostatic voltmeter and put it on the thing so we don't have to lug it with these transformers and what have you and see actually what voltage it puts out. Um, unfortunately, with this type of technology, the RPM should be like 50,000 to 100,000, but this is just kind of a, a proof of concept and not really, you know, it's, it's not designed to, to actually produce usable electrical output. And the other thing is, is the, um, the 3,000 volts have to be 30,000 volts. So that complication is, is this thing has to be put in a vacuum chamber. So those, all those uh, things make it so, so complicated that uh, it was best just to start off like this, something that that just shows the proof of concept and it does produce a usable output. So it works, it's a successful test. Yeah. So electrostatic sources of electric power by John G. Trump, the uh, uncle of uh, Donald Trump. And this is his, one of his papers that goes into this uh, rotary capacitor concept. Just go ahead then and describe the, what I already said. Vacuum insulated synchronous electrostatic generator. So you can see the capacitor plates. And there's a jar that goes over. Put a vacuum or something? Gas. Fill it with, you said, circuit breaker circuit gas? Circuit breaker gas, sulfur hexafluoride. And that keeps it from arcing over so you can get high uh, voltages. Then, a lot more than a couple thousand volts. This is the, um, here's the patent. So, the patent date is 1978. It's by Onzyme or Onzyme Bro. Um, so this is what we have on the bench. And this references Donald Trump or uh, John G. Trump's paper. Oh, so. so when Chris Carson and I started this project, we found in going through this that somebody actually had built a machine that produced 5,000 watts of DC at 5,000 volts. In other words, 5,000 volts at one amp. So this is a practical technology. It was in a case or what have you that had some kind of gas in it. And when we saw that, then, uh, hey, it's been done. So that's when Chris got started, and um, I think he used this patent. So I don't know. It's uh, I was living in a different neighborhood at that time, so I wasn't day to day with him when he built this. But um, our objective was to uh, to produce a source of electric power by parametric variation rather than the standard induction. So capacitance varying with respect to time produces a uh, basically an admittance 
and, but a negative admittance. So rather than consuming power, it produces power. So the whole idea was, what's the relationship between the power that it takes to drive it and the power that comes out of it? Because there was a possibility that it could have been more than 100%. We didn't know. So he built this machine in order to, uh, to start testing that. But unfortunately, uh, things went downhill for him at that point, and he ended up dying of brain cancer. So, but uh, we got all this stuff out of a local junkyard. I don't know what kind of crazy machine had these capacitor plates in it, but it sure was a gift from God that uh, that what we needed was right there in the junkyard. And I don't know how many months he spent balancing this thing and getting all the spacing right. And only Chris Carson would have the patience to do something like that. But uh, lo and behold, he did, and that's what he was good at, and, uh, and got this demonstration unit together, and fortunately, it's still around. Most of everything else is gone, but we still got this, so. Now the next step is to uh, start to figure out how to, uh, to get this in the motor mode. And then after that, uh, if anyone wants to pour money into the operation, then actually produce a generator because this thing is a mate to the Tesla turbine. Using electromagnetic machinery on a Tesla turbine is absolutely stupid because the RPM is so high that, um, that you're just going to have all kinds of problems. You can't really use iron anymore. And then if you're not using iron, the magnetism is slopping all over the place. and. Uh, and the beauty of this is the same geometry as the Tesla turbine. It's parallel plates. They're both made to operate at about 100,000 RPM. And uh, then there would be a machine that would produce an actual multi-horsepower output. But that's kind of beyond what we got here. But that would be kind of like where this project would be heading. At least we've demonstrated that this thing will produce AC out. I don't think anyone's really done that before.